Now we go to the infectious diseases or bar, uh, bacterial infections. First, we focus on the um, gram-positive bacterial infections. We'll include staphylococci, streptococci, and telecoca infections, bacteria, anthrax, or listeriosis, and listeriosis. For the first one, staphylococcus, they have a polymorph nuclear infiltrate with much more tissue destruction. So as you can see here, they look up, they look like grapes. They are gram-positive coccyin clusters. They produce disease by multiplication uh, and spreading tissues, like this one. And then they cause skin lesions, um, abscesses and sepsis, osteomyelitis, um, pneumonia, endocarditis, food poisoning, and toxic shock syndrome. So, um, table 1, this is actually a very important table since these are the virulence factors and enzymes or toxins of the staphylococci that can cause the disease. So, for the catalase, and then the coagulase. Coagulase actually synonymous with the invasive pathogenic potential of the organism. And then we have the hyaluronidase, which is uh, very important since it's the one that facilitates the spread of the infection. Staphylokinase, it's, it results in the lysis of the fibrin. And then proteinases, we have lipases. Uh, it degrades the lipids on the skin surface. And it's actually the, 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 the enzyme that produces the boil or the furuncle. So, if you're asked in the exam what virulence factor, what enzyme does the staphylococci use in order for it to degrade the lipid surface, thereby producing boils, the answer is lipase. And then you have exotoxins, alpha toxin. It's a pore forming uh, protein that intercalates the plasma membrane and depolarizes them. So, actually, a hemolysin, and it's the one that damages the platelets. And then it has lethal and dermonecrotic factor and it acts on vascular smooth muscle. So for the another exotoxin, we have beta toxin. It's a sphingo, uh, sphingomyelinase and it's actually the one that is toxic for the RBC. So if alpha toxin is toxic to platelets, beta toxin is actually toxic to RBC since it is a sphingomyelinase. The delta toxin is a detergent-like peptide and gamma toxin is also a hemolysin and it lies the RBCs or erythrocytes. So both of them, beta and gamma toxin, is uh, are hemolysins. Leucosidine uh, is the one that lies the phagocytic cells. This is very important, leucosidine. Exfoliative toxins, alpha and beta toxin, will uh, sp split the skin by cleaving the desmoglein 1. So desmoglein 1 is part of the desmosome that holds the epithelial cells together. That is the, this is the usual cause of the scalded skin syndrome. Later I will show you a picture. And then there, since there is a scalded skin syndrome, there will be loss of loss barrier uh, function of the skin and it will present with infection. Toxic shock syndrome it's actually uh, can also be caused by uh, it is caused by staph uh, by staphylococcus, but can also be caused by strep pyogenes. However, in this type, uh, it can present with uh, fever, shock, and multi-system involvement. There's a prototype of super antigen. It's actually from the use of tampons. So previously, during uh, early times, people keep on looking on products that would uh, help them uh, like for example in females would help them um, become uh, more uh, they, they be able to use more of their time so they will not actually change their tampons or they do not change their sanitary napkins more often so they invented tampons or super absorbent tampons and they will not be able to change those tampons in more than a day or even or more than uh, more than six hours so and since it's a warm 
uh, it can it can, it's it's susceptible for bacterial invasion. So patient will present with toxic shock syndrome, and it can also be with hypotension, renal failure, uh, liver disease. Uh, respiratory distress, rash, and coagulopathy. The enterotoxin is the one that causes the food poisoning. So, it stimulates the vomiting center. That's why when you have food poisoning, you develop vomiting or emesis. Protein A is the one that binds to FC portion of the immunoglobulins. It's actually very important since this is the one that helps escape the killing of the immune response of the staphylococcus and then we have the surface receptors we have fibrinogen fibronectin and vitronectin fibrinogen is the clumping factor and uh, these molecules are used by the staphylococci as a bridge to bind to host endothelial cells these are the infections caused by the staphylococcus number one we have the boil so again what uh, enzyme does the staphylococci use in order to um, in order to uh, degrade lipids on skin surface enabling it to produce boils it's the lipase it can present as a focal superative inflammation and this superative inflammation will, predominant, will, have, will have a predominant inflammatory cell that is the neutrophil and then it, it actually starts in the single hair follicle and will develop into a growing deepening abscess and then uh, there will be superation superation buried in the deep, deep tissue and organ and then uh, confined uh, or confined space it comes to a head it actually becomes like a head by thinning and rupturing of the overlying skin so frequently this foronkel or boil is seen in most or uh, hairy areas like the face, the axilla, the groin, the legs, and even the submammary folds. Next one is the carbuncle. It's a deep, so deeper suppuration or abscesses spreading lat laterally beneath the deep subcutaneous fascia. So if you are asked, where does the suppuration occur in the carbuncle? It's in the deep subcutaneous fascia which burrows superficially the staphylococci burrows superficially and would erupt in multiple adjacent skin sinuses so here you will see uh, a carbuncle on the posterior neck of the patient upper back and posterior neck where facial planes favor the spread of the staphylococci next one we have the hydradenitis it's actually a chronic super infection of the apocrine gland so if you are asked hydradenitis in which gland does this chronic superative infection occur um, you will have choices like uh, ecrine um, apocrine excrine so the correct answer is apocrine it's actually seen in the axilla this is actually a picture of hydradenitis in the axilla so some of uh the skin manifestation would include um, paronychia, it's actually a nail bed infection. I don't have a picture here. Or felons. Felons are par uh, skin lesions on the palmar side of the fingertips. Next one is the lung abscesses. There is extensive neutrophilic infiltrate within the alveoli and then there will be destruction of the alveoli. So very important when you say staphylococci, pneumonitis, it will cause lung abscess and eventually destruction of the alveoli. There's characteristic finding of neutrophilic infiltration and localized tissue destruction. And if the alveolar septi, uh, like this one, if this, this is actually a lung abscess. Note, there is destruction of alveoli, which is a characteristic of the staphylococcus infection. If you, if, if you see that the alveolar septi are intact, this is, this, uh, if, for example, this is a picture of uh, alveolar uh, space and you see the alveolar septae intact that is not staphylococci but rather um, strep. So the second one, the, uh, the fifth one rather, would be the scalded skin syndrome. Like what I said, what kind of toxin does this uh, 
do uh, what kind of toxins do this uh, uh, do this uh, what what toxins are the cause of this um scalded skin syndrome actually the exfoliative toxin or the alpha and b or the e and b toxin which cleaves the what again desmoglein one okay so staphylococcus scalded skin syndrome you will have a sunburn like rash all over the body and you will see a fragile bullae. Bullae is a large vesicle with serous fluid. And uh, if, 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 this, if that fragile bullae uh, burst or, or, or crust, there will be a uh, skin loss or and eventually partial uh, or total uh, skin loss. The desquamation is actually at the granulosa layer. So if you are asked, although it's not written here, you're asked what layer does does the desquamation in the scalded skin syndrome happen it's actually the granulosa layer unlike the when you compare it to lyell's disease or l y e l l apostrophe s disease the desquamation happens in the epido epidermal dermal junction so again for the skin uh, scalded skin syndrome what layer granulosa layer for Lyell's disease, what layer? Epidermal, dermal, epidermal, dermal junction. 